Nun Minch is out of the 2022 World Cup in the second group stage game for Portugal. Guys, and I'm nervous. I'm nervous. I'm really nervous. I love Nun Minch. PSG fans will be upset. Portugal fans will be upset. We lost defensive stability against Uruguay when he came off. We really did. I like Rafael Cheira. I know Fernando Sanchez is a really big fan of him. Yes, an energetic player. Very attacking player. Listen, that guy's a midfielder. He's a wing back. That's what Rafael Cheira is. And listen, we conceded two goals against Ghana and both came down from the right. Conceal was nowadays seen by a lot of people especially Manchester City fans as a, a winger or a midfielder and we do lose that defensive stability I think fullback we have very good fullbacks but they're very attacking fullbacks and Nun Minch was probably our most well-rounded fullback in my opinion I do think we lose that stability with Nun Minch uh, um, leaving the World Cup with this bad injury okay it's upsetting it is but we need to adapt balance okay I think against South Korea I'm gonna get straight into it guys yeah South Korea, this is not a friendly, this ain't no joke team. They've been good this tournament. I've been very impressed with their energy, their press. Um, they're a threat from set pieces as well, I would argue. Um, they showed that against Ghana. However, that won't work with us. We've got big players, we've got players who are big threat aerially as well. So I would like to... No, no, no. This is not what I would like to see. This is what I think we will see. I think he'll play Rui Patricio, Diogo Dalo. I love Diogo Dalo. I've, I've been a big fan of him in the last... Four months, uh, I'm a Manchester United supporter, so I see him week in, week out. He's impressed me a lot, and this might be a big chance for him to step up. Jog Dalot at right back. Um, Pep, uh, sorry, Ruben Diaz, Antonio Silva, and João Cancel at left back. João Cancel plays for Man City at left back. Listen, he'll drift into midfield, underlapping, overlapping runs. It doesn't really matter. He's such a versatile player, very well-rounded. However, there is... There is a risk in terms of defensive stability, in my opinion. Look, Cancel for me, he's a winger slash attacking midfielder, really. Look at look at the goals he gets from Man uh, the assists he gets from Man City and the goals he gets as well. He's very involved in the build-up play in central and attacking areas. So for me, Cancelo, play him at left back, give Djogdalo a chance. Djogdalo might have to remain disciplined and composed in the right back position. Maybe he won't be able to show off as much of his attacking ability that we've seen at Manchester United because it really depends. Look, we might see again Fernando Sanchez not play a defensive midfield against Korea like he did against Ghana because we're pretty much through the game, uh, through the group stages. But still, for me, it's one of them ones where you need balance. You do need balance. So I think in midfield, he'll go João Pelinha. I think he'll play two number eights though, Vitinha and Matheus Nunes. And I really like that midfield. I do really like it. I think there's a lot of balance, um, off the ball presence. Uh, the press will be implemented very well in counter-attacking, sorry, in counter pressing situations in central areas and midfield uh, once we lose possession of the ball and the front three I think it'll be very interesting I think he'll go Gonçalo Hamsh, Andres Silva and Rafael Liao now Gonçalo Hamsh for me is much more of a number nine I think he's an aerial threat I think he's very quick um, very physical he's a very fan he's a fantastic player Gonçalo Hamsh. I'm a really big fan of him at Benfica and I think he'll play in this game whether he plays in a number nine position or on the wing we'll have to wait and see but I think Fernand Tench might play about with this lineup now because we're through the group stage, but we do need to get first place because I think Korea, if they beat us 3 or 4-0, I think we get second place, if I'm not mistaken, which is very unlikely. But you never know. This is World Cup football. So, guys, this game will be very interesting. Players like Dalo, uh, Gonçalo Ramos, André Silva, Mateusz Nunch, this will give them a massive opportunity to try and get in the team in the knockout stage. And depending on who we get, Serbia, Cameroon or Switzerland, I think it's a winnable game for us. You know, the last couple uh, tournaments, we've had difficult games. We really have Belgium, Uruguay in the round of 16 in the World Cup 2018. We've had difficult games in the, in the round of 16. So now, I'm not saying Switzerland, Serbia and Cameroon are not difficult games, but they are slightly easier games for us, in my opinion. We have a, one of the best teams in the tournament. I was impressed against Uruguay, especially in the first half and in the last 20 minutes of the second half. But one thing I will say is we need to remain focused. I see lapses in concentration, which was seen in the Ghana game. And I want to see Fernand Sanch be more active when it comes to 60, 70 minute uh, substitutions because he's taken too long at times. He needs to implement. Look, look, look at that game against Uruguay. 60th, I would say 65th and 80th minute. They were on us, creating chance after chance, and it was too slow to react. However, it was still fine in those last 20 minutes because he brings on Juan Peling and Matilda Nunes, very active off the ball players, very physical players. Um, and who are good in transition as well. Uh, so I want to see that those sort of players play against uh, Korea because Korea will be on us for 90 minutes. They need to win this game, Korea. So they're going to be on us. If we'll get a draw, whatever. But for me still, 
we need to win this game. I want to see a win. I want to see these players turn up, play like they've never played before. This is a big opportunity for them, man. Gonzalo Ramos is first time being called up for Portugal. Uh, so, guys, I, I want to see it. I want to see it. Vitinha again, another player who I'm a big fan of. Very well-rounded player for PSG. And a lot of, pe a lot of people are big fans of Vitinha. So, I want to see some of these players turn up. And Cancelo at left back, Dalot at right back. It's going to be very interesting. Dalot, I want to see something from you, man. I'm such a big fan of what he's been doing at Manchester United for the last two, three months. So, it's going to be very interesting. Rui Patricio, very experienced goalkeeper at this point. So, he might get a chance to play. Antonio Silva, big man. I wanted to see this guy game against Uruguay. However, Pepe was vital in our win against Uruguay at times because of his physicality. Listen, the thing about Pepe, he might not be the quickest anymore. And he might be a bit sloppy sometimes in possession and out of possession in terms of knowing when to, to track the runner or when to, you know, Pepe's a player who's a, still a very well-rounded Pepe, really. He's been playing for a very long time. And we saw at times against Uruguay, he was following the opposition striker, he was following him. And look, when you don't have that recovery pace, you might as well stay back. doesn't mean we're going to play a deep line for the whole 90 minutes because we were controlling the game for the first half in particular. But Antonio Silva and Ruben Diaz will be able to play a lot more of that Pressing football, that's it, putting pressure on opposition striker and following them and win that ground duel. And that's it, the timings will be important. And this is why I'm such a big fan of Lissandro Martinez at Manchester United. I love him because his timings in terms of ground duels and his interceptions and tackles and his reading of the game is fantastic. And Pepe does have that because he's very experienced. So, guys, against Korea, let's just play with our hearts. Let's get a good result. Are we going to get Serbia, Switzerland or Cameroon? Guys, let me know.